Welcome to Inspiring Business with your host, Mark Bullock, who is the co-founder of Videosocials.net and of VideoInterviewPodcast.com. In every episode, Mark interviews business and organizational thought leaders who share their stories of how they inspire others by making a difference. You can find this show on Videosocials.net and YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and almost any podcast platform of your choosing. Welcome, and today my guest is Anju Jasani. Anju is a mediator and trainer with over 25 years of experience. Divorce with Dignity Mediation Services is the name of her practice, and it reflects her philosophy. She's the past president of the New Jersey Association of Professional Mediators and has offices in Hoboken and Clinton in New Jersey. Great, and welcome. I'm glad to have you, Anju. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you, Mark, for inviting me to your show. I'm very excited about being here. Well, I'm excited. Uh, we're, I'm excited to have you. And I think one of the best places to start, uh, because the Inspiring Business podcast is all about people who are inspired and are inspiring to uh, uh, inspired for in the services that they provide, and that and those services uh, end up inspiring their clients, etc. So, um, and we've known each other for. Uh, for many years now. Uh, we met, uh, I think, at a uh, New Jersey uh, uh, Professional Mediators uh, Conference uh, some years ago. Um, but I think it's valuable for, uh, for people to find out what, you know, what's your story? How, how did you become a mediator? Why did you become a mediator? Can you talk about that for a minute? Sure, Mark. So there's some people who know from the day they're born, they want to be a doctor or a dentist or a lawyer. But I've really had a... Um, very career. And um, I received my MBA in 1983 and had a career in finance. Um, I got a buyout from my, I was a vice president at JP Morgan in 1997. I got a buyout and I said, well, what do I want to do next? And while I was concurrently looking for another job, I also said I wanted to take the mediation training. I'd gone through my own divorce through mediation and thought, well, maybe this is something I'm interested in. So that was in May of 1997. I took Ken Newman, the Center for Family and Divorce Mediations class, and I fell in love with the process. And I stopped my job search and I, I started my practice. And so that's what I've been doing for the last 25 plus years. Fantastic. And um it seems like many mediators are, are it's it's a second or a third or a fourth uh, a kind of career um but uh um, so what have you found that you really enjoy the most about the work that you do for clients when you're mediating a divorce or separation um, the first thing is that you are providing a great service to clients who are in a painful period of their life and they need to get past that and you're providing it in a cost-effective manner, certainly more expedient. It's like a hot potato. The longer you hold it, the more you're likely to get burnt. And um, you know that they're going to rebuild their lives. They don't at that time because they are in a, you know, in a huge amount of hurt and pain. But two years later, they'll have a different perspective. And I've gone through that myself through my own divorce. So it's a way to provide a service. You're getting paid you're making a living and you're doing good. And um, so it's an intersection of, uh, you know, there's a demand and there's something that you're good at and something that you enjoy. And I think you have to have those three things in a career, right? You can enjoy something, but if you can't make money at it or there's no demand for it, then you're dead in the water. So it is something that you can manage. You can have a very busy practice. You can work 40 hours a week plus, or you can do this somewhat part-time. You could even do a full-time job and do this in the evenings or weekends if you wanted. So there's a lot of flexibility and you determine your schedule, right? It's not a court or a boss telling you when you have to work. It's you deciding how to structure your time. Fantastic. And, and you know, I think that what you were just talking about is kind of the trainer in you, right? Because that you, you also do a training of, um, for divorce mediation, correct? So I do, I'm the lead trainer for the New Jersey Association of Professional Mediators, which is the Mediation Association, New Jersey. And we offer both 
civil business training. I head the divorce training. And so we get people from all types of backgrounds who are coming to either add this to their practice. They may be a lawyer, social worker who want to expand their practice mm -hmm. or they're looking to change careers. Now, the reality is for mediators, mediation is probably a third of their practice. There are very few full-time mediators, not just in New Jersey, but throughout the country or the world. But I am one of those rare birds who is a full-time mediator. Um, and I do everything, soup to nuts. I do my own marketing. I provide the service. I wash the windows. I throw <laughs> the party, right? So I edit my own videos when I have them. So um, I like that. It keeps, I keep control. I'm not looking to scale this business. I'm looking for practice. I'm looking to be able to work for a very long time in something that I get a lot of personal gratification for and that I'm providing a service to the public. Well, and that service really makes a difference, uh, you know, and, and so I, I, I want to acknowledge you because we, um, I drank the Kool-Aid uh, a long time ago. Um, uh, one of your caught one of your colleagues, Ada Haslocker, was one of our first mediation um, uh, clients uh, back with uh, uh, we were doing practice marketing advisors at that point. And um, and moving forward through the um, New York County, New York State Council of Divorce Mediation, and then on to the New Jersey, et, et cetera, et cetera. And we've spoken at conferences, and, and we have many over the years. We have had many, many uh, divorce mediators and divorce mediation trainers as clients, and and uh, you know, and that's how we met our, ourselves. But um, I just find. Um, there are so many advantages to somebody looking at a process, a, a, the mediation process, because it allows for you to, um, uh, in the process of getting separated and divorced, to maintain the relationship that's required to be able to co-parent um, is is probably not the is probably one of the main reasons, but also just the just to to get past the vitriol. And, and 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 the anguish um, uh, that I think is 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 almost compounded when you try to bring a case to court. Um, so um, I really acknowledge you for for doing that. But when you're working with a client, it's a little different. Um, it's quite a bit different, in fact, than you know hiring opposing counsel and 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 kind of taking on putting on the boxing gloves and going after each other. Um, but can you walk me through what a typical engagement would be when you're when you're working with a couple that's looking to get separated or divorced? Sure. Thank you, Mark. And I, by the way, Ada is just such a terrific uh, mediator. She's in Long Island, and I, I, you know, she's my go-to person when I have a Long Island case. So, thank awesome. you for mentioning her. Um, so, people often think that if you're going to mediation, it's either the mediator or the attorneys. And I first of all want to dissuade the public of that notion. As you're going through mediation, you may need advice along the way. Mm -hmm. Tell me what to do. That's where you might hire an attorney to not only do the paperwork after you're done with the mediation, but to advise you during the process. So it's not me or the attorneys, it's me and the attorneys, but the attorney is no longer in a litigation role. They're in an advisory role. So let me walk you through typically what will happen. And most of my clients come to me while they're still living together in the same house and the word divorce has come up or separation. And now they don't want to go through litigation. Many of my clients are children of divorce. They've lived through it themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, their parents can't sit together through a graduation or a wedding. You know, when they have grandchildren, they visit them at separate times. These are the awful, this is the fallout of a bad divorce. So for me, I get these clients who come in and, you know, they're probably at the lowest point in their life. They did not plan to get divorced when they walked down the aisle, but here they are. And they may find me through the internet or through a referral. Sometimes uh, it's another lawyer who might refer it. Sometimes it is even a court official, but they come to me and they are coming to me together. So a husband and wife or wife and wife, husband and husband, they're all variations will come to me and I offer a free half hour consultation, mostly to just get a feel for who I am, whether they want to work with me, whether I think they're appropriate for mediation, and that's an inf information session. Once we get past that, usually mediation takes approximately five sessions. 
the first session is really getting an overview of the client situation. What are their assets? What are their liabilities? What are their goals for the divorce? What do they want life to look like two years from now? And if they have that vision, then we know what they're aiming towards and we can work backwards. And then what documents do they need to bring in? Are there any experts they need? They may need someone to appraise a business, appraise a home, appraise a pension. So we need to have a big picture of who else needs to be involved in the process. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they may need attorneys to advise them during the process. If they're high net worth clients, they're definitely going to benefit from that advice now versus later when the attorney reviews the agreement and because they didn't have a hand in crafting it, they're not getting buy-in. So after we have that introductory session, we're usually focusing on the parenting plan, how the parties want to share the time with the children, what they look at in terms of private school, public school, how do they view religion, education, medical decisions. Nowadays, the talk is about vaccines, right? It's always been about vaccines, but now it's in the forefront. So all these areas of the parenting plan get discussed. Mm -hmm. I'm acting as scribe or keeping notes. Once we have the parenting plan, we then go on to the division of assets. And clearly you need people's documents in order to help them do that. I work with them to build a balance sheet and then we figure out how they want to divide things. Usually if you have a premarital asset that you've kept separately, that's not included in the division. If you have a pension that was premarital and marital, we have to apportion it. But that's really, in some sense, the easiest part of most divorces, the division of assets. Then we move on to the support issues, child support if they're children, sometimes alimony. And then we have to tie up the loose ends, talk about taxes, talk about life insurance. But after that, I prepare what's called a memorandum of understanding. It summarizes everything they've agreed to. And we have a final session to review that. This takes place with sessions two or three weeks apart and they're usually completed with the mediation process within a two or three month period. And then I move them towards mediation friendly attorneys who will review the agreements we drafted and will do the paperwork for the divorce. And of course it's recommended that they each have separate attorneys in New Jersey An attorney can't represent both parties in a divorce. But this is the most efficient, the kindest, the friendliest, and the agreements have a long shelf life, right? There's a statistic that two years after a divorce, 50% of clients who went through litigation are back in court. My clients, if they need to come back, they come back to, to me or to another mediator. And sometimes it's just a two minute phone call that they need to clarify something. So there's no this filing post-divorce judgment motions and so forth. 90% of the clients who come to mediation voluntarily reach an agreement. So I always say, why not you? Absolutely. And and there's so much inside what you just said that, you know, could be unpacked. But a, a few things that really stand out for me is, is, is that you're helping them from the beginning in having a forward look and having and developing a vision for what they want their lives to be post-divorce. And I don't think they get that in the litigation world, right? Um, they're, you know, they're, 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 they're they're coming at it from a perspective of realizing that you know this is this is going to provide a fresh start for how the rest of their lives are going to look and why not do that in a way so that they can be in the same room together when one of their children get gets married or uh, graduates from college etc um and 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 be able to you know set the vitriol on this on the side or you know complete that through you know um, counseling or, 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 or whatever else, rather than, you know, um, hiring opposing counsel to, you know, to, to try to further tear each other apart. So, um, that's, that's one of the main things that, that, that I see, but, you know, there's an, there's an underlying thread that it's just far more streamlined when you're not, when you're, when you're not fighting out the details, you, and, and I know this through my many, many interactions with many divorce mediators over the year, over the years. Um, and that is that the couple is making the decisions for themselves rather than handing it over to a judge or or having attorneys battle it out in, in, a, in a settled agreement. Um, you know, th they get to choose their destiny. They get to choose how they want to 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 um, uh, to be parents. 
and and they get to choose how they want to um, divide their assets. Of course, within the guardrails of you know the law, um, but at the same token, there's a, there seems to be a lot more flexibility uh, in a mediated mediated process rather than you know two attorney two attack dog attorneys uh, going at each other's throats to. <laughs> to uh, um, uh, to put something together that's not going to be something that they can live with, right? Uh, you know, that's that. You know, and that's the last point that that I see is a mediated agreement. And you touched on this is something that has durability because they were a part of that engagement. It wasn't two attorneys fighting it out over what they thought was you know fair. It was what was negotiated with the help of a mediator. Uh, with each other, and, uh, and and so there's a lot more buy-in and a lot and a lot more um, um, willingness uh, to comply with something that they helped create. Is is that true? Yeah. First of all, you touched on something which is very important. Touchstone of mediation is the concept of self-determination. That the clients make the decisions. The mediator creates a process, but the mediator does, does not decide for the clients. I'm a guide, just like a tour guide. You know, you tell me what you want. You want uh, to do this. And if they're out, you're doing things outside the parameters, I will tell you it's unusual. It's not for me to decide an agreement's fair or unfair, but we mediate what I say in the shadow of the law. And so people want information about how the law works and a mediator will give that. They can't apply the law to a specific case, but once we provide the law, you can understand how your agreement fits that paradigm. Um, so yeah, the you know the statistics are that you know people who mediate are less likely to go back to court and are happier with the agreements and no one likes to be ordered to do things. So if people agree to pay X amount of support, they'll pay it. If it's a oftentimes if it's a judge uh, ordering them to do it, then we're we're all kind of a little bit rebellious sixteen year olds at heart and we don't want to do that. <laughs> exactly. So, um, Anju, how do people find you? Uh, wh what's your website address? So my website address is www.dwdmediation.org. And I'm all over the web. It's, I'm easy to find. I mean, there aren't many Anju Jasanis. So um, I just tell you, even if you put Anju and divorce mediator in, you will find me. And so Absolutely. I don't worry about being found. You know, when I was growing up in New Jersey, having a an unusual name, you know, was more or less an albatross, right? It's something you didn't want, but now I'm glad that I have a name that it's easily found. And um, so I would tell you this, 50% of my clients do find me on the web. And the work that I do with video socials has really increased my visibility with clients. They say that they like the videos. I have learned that most people only watch a minute or two of a video. So to start make, keeping it short is helpful. Um, but I have a lot of great articles on my website that are informational. They're not about selling my services. They're about things like what does equitable distribution mean? You know, how does the Uniform Prenuptial Act work in New Jersey? How do the New Jersey Child Support Guidelines work? So they're really good information sources. I've had clients who printed out my entire website and brought it to the mediation session. I'm and they'll quote an article that I wrote 20 years ago, and I'm like, oh, did I say that? That's that's very good. <laughs> Well, and, and one of the things is your website, I've seen your website and your website is just chock full of, 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 of wonderful information that, that is, is really designed. It. And part of what we do, and if, if I may, you, you mentioned that you're a member of Video Socials and Video Socials is one of our uh, uh, three primary services uh, and that we help people who are um, professionals um, practicing professionals, uh, whether they be uh, mediators, attorneys, financial advisors, CPAs, coaches, consultants, etc., uh, that need to get the word out um, as far as in developing content. And you've created a tremendous amount of content uh, that's also that's on your website, but there's also in places like YouTube, right? So I believe it's Anju Jasani uh, One is is your uh, is your YouTube channel, and there you have dozens of videos. Um, many dozens, in fact, of, of videos that you've created over the last several years uh, through video socials. Um, and uh, before I ask, you know, what your what your experience is with it and what you what you what you like about it, uh, just to, to give the audience a, a flavor for what it is. 
Um, many of us know what a Zoom conference is now and, and video conferences is, is now, but we started this before, uh, we started video socials before the pandemic. So there, there weren't as many people in, involved, but what we do is we, we come together five to eight people at a time uh, in, in uh, meetings and we take turns recording our one to three minute videos and um, in which we're having a conversation with, with an audience. We're providing valuable information. We're, we're, we're developing content that's educational, informational, uh, and valuable for um, those that uh, have an interest, uh, whether they be a prospective client, whether they be uh, uh, somebody that we're currently working with, or whether they be somebody that might refer us business. So it's an authentic uh, way to um, connect with people in this video, in this new age of video environment, uh, which is so much more impactful than just text, as an example, and um, and I know that Anju that, that you do have many uh, text articles and you have many videos, but you know what have you gotten out of, of video socials and in, in, in your membership? So it, it's a tremendous source. I mean, I go to the Wednesday 5 p.m. session, but I could go you know, to any session, many sessions a week if I wanted. Um, first of all, by going to the same session every week, you develop a network of people that you trust, right? So even if someone who is not a regular comes in, you've got a core group that is going to give you honest feedback. And part of that was, how was your delivery? How was your content? And most importantly, should you post it or should you redo it? And so when you have that feedback and you can also, you know, you also give that, you, you can feel that, you know, do, does it pass the muster of um, this week or should I redo it? And sometimes if there's time and there aren't that many people in the session, we'll redo it in that session. So you've got a, a really good group. Now, I would say in the group I go to, 60% of the people also work in family law in some capacity. Danae Matthews is down in Atlanta. We have Melissa Goodstein and Ken Novenstern who are up in New York. But we also have the people who are not attorneys or not mediators. And they're great too, because they can view this from a different perspective of the client. You know, what am I hearing? What didn't I understand? What acronyms did you use that I have no idea what you're talking about? So, um, you know, I might say um, um, MOA or Memorandum of Understanding, MOU. And you know, they're going to look at me like you didn't explain what that was. So those people are helpful as well. We have Steve Cart. We have um, the healthcare savant, Ken, um, <laughs> some really interesting people. And um, so I, I really like that trust that we have in the group. And so it's better for me to go to a regular class because I know who's going to give me the best feedback. And I try also to be really candid with my feedback. Sometimes you need to sandwich it in terms of a criticism and between two compliments, but I will always give an honest assessment, should you post it or not? And that's really ultimately um, the question. I will also say for people who are watching, you need to caption those videos. I didn't do it in the beginning, but lots of times people are watching videos in bed at night with the sound off, so have those captions. Absolutely. It's uh, uh, the, the statistics are more than 50 percent, in fact, of videos that are that are watched on social media are um, are read rather than listened to. Um, it, it's uh, it, it, it's it's something that I think it's it's it, you're absolutely correct. It's very important to caption. But um, you had you had mentioned um, uh, a couple of people that uh, might be a a good fit to, uh, might be interested in, in being on the Inspiring Business podcast. Who, who did you have in mind? Well, I already mentioned some people who are in my 5 p.m. Wednesday group. Mm -hmm. um, but let me also give a some suggestions. Gabrielle Stritch is another New Jersey Association of Professional Mediators mediator, and she's also an attorney and collaborative lawyer. She would be a great uh, interviewee. Um, Michael Lehner is a business valuation expert, also New Jersey expert. I would definitely recommend My Michael. I've done a lot of um, work with him over the years. Um, and I think Steve Karsh would be great. He's so well-spoken and you have to get some of his, how he records the videos so well too, because he is uh, he's flawless in his presentation. 
Fantastic. Well, I, and I appreciate their call outs. And, and for our audience, every everybody that we've talked about, all the links that we've talked about are all going to be uh, tied in and associated with this um, with this video and in, uh, in the audio podcast versions of it in whatever uh, version that you're playing. And so we could we could go on and on. But uh, I, I did want to ask you, Anju, um, what are one or two things that you really want people to think about if they're trying to weigh out, should I try to do a divorce on my own? Should I go and, and hire an attorney? Should I consider divorce mediation? What, what, what are the one or two things that people really need to think about that why they really should consider divorce mediation, at least as a first option rather than as an alternative option? So the, I, I would say before we get into any of that, the first question is, is, do I really want a divorce? Is the marriage salvageable? And what do I need to stay in the marriage? And if it's the other person who wants the divorce, what could I offer them so that we might work on this? I mean, marriage, divorce should not be taken lightly. And I don't think people do, but I think people are struggling. And when I have two clients who are ambivalent, I, I suggest either discernment counseling, which is short-term therapy, not to change the marriage, but to see if in fact through four to six sessions with the discernment counselor, that there is something that could turn this marriage around or Imago couples workshops. And it doesn't have to be Imago, but those are the ones that I like, which is a weekend workshop. You'll know by the end of the weekend, whether there is, you know, this marriage can be saved. So if it can't, there's still a benefit of having gone to therapy because some of the pain of going through this is addressed in therapy. People often look to their attorneys for that and they don't get that and it can become expensive. So at least in New Jersey, I encourage people to think about mediation. Oftentimes they have an understanding that they, or they have a misunderstanding about how the mediation process works. They may say, well, I didn't manage the money in the marriage. So how can I come to mediation? My husband holds all the cards or vice versa. And Part of that is that the mediator is going to be an educator. They're going to give you information and the mediator will provide resources. If you do need to come up to speed, it may be an attorney, it may be a financial advisor. It may be a class at the county college on basic, you know, money management, bookkeeping. Um, so if you start in mediation, you're, you know, a 90% chance you're going to reach a resolution. If you start in litigation and you don't reach a settlement in New Jersey after you've spent time and money and you've gone through all that stress, the court's going to send you to mandatory mediation anyhow. So you might as well start here rather than end here. Right. right. Absolutely. Well, Anju, it's really been a pleasure having you on. Um, I, I, I want to acknowledge and thank you for as somebody who is not just, you're not selling divorce. And I think your last statement really kind of highlights that and the fact that, you know, let's not even start the process until you know that this is the direction that you want to go and, and that, you've, that you've looked at, at, at other options that you may not, have con, may not have considered just because you're not getting along or there's a point of contention that, that, that uh, you don't think you can get past you know, there are professionals out there that, 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 that may be able to intercede with that and may be able to help you see another, another option. But if it comes down to it, I know that if, in, if they're in New Jersey, they're, they're not going to go wrong by reaching out to you. Um, thank you, Anju. I really appreciate having you on today. Um, and, um, and I, I look forward to your continued success and, and, and your continued difference that you make for the clients that you serve. Thank you, Mark, for having me. Terrific. You've been listening to Inspiring Business with your host, Mark Bullock. Your positive comments, likes, and most importantly, your sharing of this show with others is greatly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe to the Inspiring Business Podcast on whatever platform you prefer. You can catch prior episodes on videosocials.net and on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and all the major platforms.